we are going to take an initial look at a brand new 3D 3C professional VR camera, the Techy VMAX 3D. This camera is built with professional VR filmmakers in mind. A noticeable feature is standard SSD drive as a storage. As you see, I'm using the standard Samsung EVO solid state drive. This saves a ton of time for onset DIT and also minimize the risk of SD card failure. It uses the latest H.265 compression technology as its video codecs to capture more data in a smaller file size. Techy understand the importance of ambisonic audio capture. So the camera has no fans and no vans. Instead, it used a full suited aluminum enclosure to dissipate heat. So when it records, it is silence. To handle different filming environments like the desert or waterfall, Techie claims that VMAX is fully waterproof and dustproof. And their stitching solution called Techy Optic Render relocate each pixel in a new position to achieve a better result, which is pretty impressive compared to Mystica VR and other stitching solution. Let's take a more in-depth look at the camera. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up, the number one YouTube channel dedicated to virtual reality filmmaking for everyone. Techy sent me a beta unit of the VMAX 3D for testing. After filming it in Kauai, I want to make an initial review video. This is not a sponsored content and the unit is for testing only. Also, this is a beta unit, so your production unit should be even better. If you have not heard of Techie, short for technology for everyone, here is another review of the Techie 720 Pro 260 camera. Like all the other Techie camera, VMAX 3D has an impressive build quality. It does not feel like a cheap plastic like some other Chinese make to see camera. I feel like I can drop this thing on the ground and it will survive. Like in Star 2 see Pro 2, it also used two antenna to boost the Wi-Fi signal so you can remote control the camera using the cell phone mobile app. It's not as far as the far side from Insta360, but it is pretty decent as the antenna is bigger and higher quality. It has the lunchbox design for ease to carry around with the red handle right here on top of the camera because the camera get pretty hot during filming. More on that later. You can mount your spatial audio devices directly on top like my A3 VR here. VMAX 3D has audio capture internally, but they recommend using external spatial audio microphone like Zoom A3 VR, which I have a review right here. You can do simple operation in the front panel here, but it does not have a LED display like the Titan or the Pro 2. So it is recommended to control the camera using mobile app. Let's talk about the mobile app. It is a professional VR camera, so it has full manual control, individual lens exposure, ISO priority, and shutter speed priority mode. One cool little feature is that the preview has stitch line grid overlay. It helps the DP to know who and what is in the stitch line. It is simple, but it's really useful on set for blocking and directing. Back to the camera, the major advantage of choosing the VMAX 3D is the storage. VMAX use standard SATA 3 SSD drives, which provide faster read and write speed both in camera and in offloading footage on set. You can even get a couple of the Samsung SSD, which I have right here, and use it as a editing drive in post. It is faster than most of your drive anyway, so no offloading necessary. Using a single SSD is safer than using 9 SD cards like the Insta360 Titan, as one of the SD cards fail, it will ruin your entire shoot. 
VMAC solved the DIT nightmare in to see production on set. As a professional DIT myself, I really enjoy this feature. If you are the sound guy, you will love this camera too. The camera has no fans and no vents. Instead, it uses a fully sealed aluminum enclosure to dissipate heat, so no fan noise. If audio is crucial for your production, VMAX will be an excellent option. One thing though you need to be very careful is that the camera gets pretty hot during long hour filming. You should not touch the camera body directly like that. Use the red handlebar right here instead. The battery is built inside the camera. There is no replaceable battery, which is kind of a bummer. It is a good battery though, and the camera can film continuously for two hours. If you need to film longer hours, VMAX can hot swap external batteries that sold separately. These batteries are the size of an iPhone, but can give two to three hours extra filming time without interrupting the recording. Combined with a big SSD, this camera can technically run forever. The reason why the battery is built in according to Techie is that the camera is waterproof and dustproof. They have a video running water to one of their Techie cameras on their Facebook group, not the Femex 3D, but we hope the production version of the Femex 3D can also have this feature. This will open so many creative ideas for 360 VR, like put the camera directly under a waterfall. But I don't know if the camera is really waterproof yet, so don't take my word for it. Here is a video shot on Femex in Belfast in IVRPA. The camera is in the middle of the fountain. You would never want to do this with the Insta360 Pro camera. So Femex is definitely splash proof, but I still wish it is waterproof so I can capture myself doing stuff like this. I really appreciate if a camera design pays attention to detail. Take a look at the power supply system here. It used pins connection and a screwable ring to secure the connection. So if your intern step on the power cable, it will not unplug and ruin your entire shoot. There are other connections at the bottom of the camera, including ethernet cable for live streaming, GPS antenna for Google Street View, a HDMI 2.0 out for video village and live video monitoring. It also have a more stable mounting option than comparable with FLIR Ladybug spherical camera system. It is designed for more than just 360 cinematographers. I also noticed interchangeable lens design here. It indicates the possibility of swapping different f-stop lens or adding ND filter like their Techie 720 Pro camera. This is just my guessing based on their other cameras. Good design does not mean anything if the image quality is not up to the professional standard. So let's take a look at my sample footage of this camera. Again, this is an early beta unit, so some of the problem you see from my footage might not be there anymore in the final production unit. The raw camera video is encoded in H.265 with a total bit rate of up to 600 megabit per second, which is equivalent to 900 megabit per second for H.264 encoding. To compare the Insta360 Pro 2 compressed in H.264 in 120 megabit per second, in total 720 megabit per second, so VMAX has around 20% more data than Pro 2. Also, noticeable mention, VMAX tell you what sensor they use on their camera with total transparency. It uses six Sony Exmor R CMOS sensor that share the same clock signal. If you do some Googling, you know that Sony XMOD R sensor is better in low light. You can see that in my sample footage when the suns go down entirely. The brand new Insta360 Titan also uses a shot 265 compression technology to improve image quality and data efficiency. So we can see the trend here. I highly recommend if you have not already, go check out the VMAX 3D sample video I created in your Oculus Go or Oculus Crest. The footage looks great, 
and with a good detail and low compression artifacts. Low light is clear with minimal noise, and the camera actually captured the rainbow created by the sprouting horn in Hawaii, as you see right here. But I do spot things that are not so great. Dynamic range is a weakness right now, especially the blowout highlight compared to other VR camera. It does not do lock just yet, so there is no way to protect the highlights. In the next video, I will compare the VMAX 3D with Instar 260 Pro 2 and Kandao Obsidian. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You also notice stitching issue, but that is stitched with Mexica VR. At the time I produced this video, their software is not ready yet. The lens on VMAX 3D is 200 degrees, so it has a good amount of overlap. Techie claims that their own stitching solution can do 1 meter optical flow stitching. This is pretty impossible from a technical standpoint. I cannot back that statement, so I will also be very interested to see when their software is released. A quick update, Techie just sent me their new software, it's still in Chinese. So I actually want to test it against Mystica VR and see how much better or worse compared to Mystica VRs. So let's open Mystica VR. Here is the footage we have here. We'll drag it into Mystica VR. So in here, I provided my Mystica VR template free to download the link in the description so you can download my sample footage and stitch it yourself. If you don't see the stitch overlay, go ahead and hit 1 and 2 in Mystica VR on the keyboard. As you see issues right here, let me just zoom in right here. So go ahead and turn on optical flow for Mystical VR. And hit 1 and 2 and we move the, the stitch layout overlay. And you see that there is some optical flow issue here. If you go ahead and play it. You see her face, his face, the fence, especially the fence has some optical flow issue. So one thing from experience I can tell you, fans like this is the enemy of optical flow. It would never really get it right even if you use Mystica VR and as you see this video, it's surrounded by fans. So it's all fans, look at that, it's all fans. So there's actually no way around it. It considered to be one of the hardest thing to stitch in 260. So now let's go ahead and open the Techie Studio, the beta software. So don't worry, it's in Chinese. I will walk you through it. Let's go ahead and pick the file. Go ahead and select the folders. And here's the same file we just stitched in Mystica VR. Go ahead and turn off overlay. Go ahead and turn on the VR mode. And as you see, it is have a lot of issue right here. So now we'll go ahead and play with some setting right here. So first thing we do is make sure that you turn on optical flow. And then here is a rough, instead of rough, I gotta use like accurate optical flow. I still have a lot of issue, but we can increase the optical flow strength in here to max. Pay attention right here. Bam, you fix a lot of issue. You can also play with like, if it's indoor and outdoor, this is two option right here. But I think actually when outdoor is look pretty perfect. As you see right here, I'm gonna play it. Again, in order to have a pretty good preview, uh, you do need a pretty fast graphic card here. I had the Titan RTX, so that's why I, I can actually preview it. As you see the fence, if you pay attention to the fence, like, those optical flow issue is really gone. It still have some issue, but it's a lot better than what we had before for, Mys for Mystica VR. So it's pretty impressive. Although the software doesn't have the like, moving optical flow stitch line, like Mystica VR, but let's say that if, if a scene like that is surrounding by people, there's no way you can push the stitch line. Having a stitching algorithm that actually improve the stitching quality all around is kind of pretty important, especially for scenes like this, which is surrounding by the, the enemy, the fence, right? So just from the initial look, the beta software is actually have pretty decent optical flow stitching algorithm. It's actually better than Mystica VR. So I'm actually very excited to see how this software got improved in the future. basic feature and most anticipated feature are still missing in my beta unit. This feature including 
12K monoscopic 360 photos in camera stabilization, which according to Techie is one of the great features that will also open source as SDK to third party application like Mexican VR. Raw photo mode is still missing and 120 frames per second video mode in 4K and live streaming mode are also missing, at least in the current mobile app version. Vmax 3D is still a small sensor 3D 360 camera, so still has that sport camera look, like the Google E Halo Rig or Insta360 Pro 2. It does not do 10-bit color depth with 422 color subsampling, which is the key to have that cinematic look. Since it uses H.265 codecs, just as Insta360 Titan, we are not so sure if the final production unit will actually have 10-bit. Again, this is just my guessing and what I hope will happen. Thank you for watching this video. This is just a beginning review and testing of the VMAX 3D. My friend Mai Tai from 360 Rumors listed the detailed spec of this camera and I will provide the link below. Definitely go check it out and hear his perspective to get a full picture. Together with Mai Tai, we hope to cover as many new 360 VR cameras as possible for you. Again, if you have not go check out my 360 spouting horn video shot with the camera to see the quality yourself. The next video, I will put VMAX 3D head to head again in Star 260 Pro 2, Canada Obsidian, and the Insta 260 Titan. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Give me a like and support your boy Hugh here to provide you more independent review of the latest tech in virtual reality filmmaking. I also captured so many amazing 360 tiny planet photos of Kauai and Hawaii. They are all going to be released weekly on my Instagram. So please consider follow me on Instagram as well. You will see a very different version of me there. And I will see you next time in the next video. Stay fresh. Thank you.